in Pyeongchang following the country's ban by the IOC following doping offences at the 2014 Games in Sochi. And Cork native Brendan Bubba Newby makes his Olympics debut in the early hours of the morning. The freestyle skier will represent Ireland in the half pipe. That is due to get underway at 4am for those of you who don't fancy a bit of sleep. Cheers, Richie. Monday Night Rugby on Off The Ball With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team We all belong to the team of us So uh, we are uh, gap week over closing in on round three of the Six Nations France Italy is on Friday night and then Saturday it is a very appetising double bill starting with Ireland Wales 2.15 and then 4.45 I think or is it slightly later? 4.45 sounds right, go with that I think it might even be five. Anyway, after Alan Wales, Rory O'Connor of the Irish Independent here in studio, it is Scotland, England at Murrayfield. So a really interesting weekend ahead. And Eddie O'Sullivan is on the line as well. Evening, Eddie. Evening, Joe. So I saw actually just to, to deal with the weekend that was, I saw the Scarlet's coach, Wayne Pivak, yeah. uh, making the point that he's not so sure the Pro 14 should be putting on a game like Leinster Scarlet's during the Six Nations window, which is something I must say I thought myself there. Yeah. The main suppliers to both international sides. I think you had the point in the paper today, Rory. 23 frontliners were missing. And he said, personally, I'm a bit disappointed we played Leinster twice in this window last year and that we're playing them twice again this year. I would have thought that the two of the teams from last year who probably played some of the most attractive rugby scored some of the best tries and were there at the end of the season uh, don't get to play at full strength. Uh, it is a pity, all right. I mean, it does seem like one of the marquee fixtures in that group. And I know it's all very congested and we moan when the Interpros have rested teams. But 23 uh, frontliners missing from what could be one of the games of the Pro 14 season is, uh, uh, I think if it can be avoided, let's avoid it. I think so. And I think um, Pro 14 from, you know, I, I spoke to them a little bit just about uh, PVAC's comments to give them give them a kind of writer reply or whatever and I think they, they're generally on the same page with that I mean they, they acknowledge that it's not ideal I think they, they had to rush their fixture list out a little bit this year with the introduction of the South African teams and the rejigging of the whole thing into conferences and I think it's to, it, you know, it is best avoided it's it's unfortunate you know to, it's, it denuded the fixture even though it was a decent certainly the first half was a decent game mm. um, lit up by James Lowe um, but to have them meeting twice either side of an Ireland Wales game when they are bulk suppliers um, is unfortunate. I suppose it's a level playing field for the two of them to a degree because they are neck and neck at the top of the conference. Um, but it just feeds into the Pro 14 uh, having that place in the, on, on the, the kind of on the chart, and it it, um, it takes away from yeah. It should be a game we'd all be promoting in April or in or you know at a, a different time of the year. But instead, even when we're watching that game, we're watching it through the prism of the Six Nations. So I think Wayne Pivak has a point, and I think that point is probably acknowledged within the corridors of power. Okay. Okay, well that's fair enough then. So uh, Wales are coming to town, Eddie, and as uh, Joe Schmidt has to weigh up what to do in the uh, centre of his back line, Wales are coming with Dan Bigger, uh, Falatau, Lee Halfpenny all given the all clear, George North uh, played for Northampton at the weekend, Liam Williams scored the only try uh, for Saracens against Sale at the weekend, so uh, suddenly Wales after, uh, I guess, a tough enough couple of opening weeks on the injury front arrive uh, in Dublin feeling much better about life, just in time. Yeah, it seems to be kind of the piece of the jigsaw falling into place from. I think they'll be um, disappointed about losing in Twickenham, uh, TMO mistake apart. I think they felt they'd probably got enough opportunities to sneak away with that game. Um, so I think they, they, and they know as well, like obviously if they lose on Saturday, it's curtains for the championship. That's all, it's done and dusted. So they, they will come with kind of a sense of la- last chance saloon in that respect. They've got guys coming back. And um, they'll, they'll fancy their chance against Ireland. They you know they they drew it in Dublin uh, two years ago. Yeah. Um. So I think they'll feel that they have a lot to prove. You know, they, they they've been kind of written off to start the championship because there's so many injuries. You know, that so many frontliners missing. People didn't think. But I think they're they're probably in a good place mentally. Um. Bit of a point to prove. Bit of a chip on the shoulder after tweaking them. All the things that you'd like to put in your locker for an away game where you're you're not favourites, which mm. surprised me that I think you know. The, I saw a spread somewhere that was like something like 12 or 15 points for Ireland but Ooh. I just thought that was a bit weird you know I think it would be an awful tight game but I, I think Wales are in a, a pretty good place and they uh, you know a set of chip on the shoulder and something to prove that's always a, a, a potent combination Yeah I mean I know we've every reason to be uh, confident Rory but Ireland's sole win over Warren Gatlin's Wales in their past five attempts was a 2015 World Cup warm up mm. and 
Our last Six Nations win was in 2014. Uh, people might remember that game because for whatever reason that was a season where nobody could deal with Ireland's maul and they yeah. just repeatedly mauled over for tries and it seemed like uh, teams were powerless. And, Boy days. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, well, you know, they, that was a time when the Aviva was standing up saying, maul, uh, you know, we were all experts in uh, what was going on there. So uh, that was 2014. So actually, you know, Wales will be looking at Ireland thinking there's no psychological hang-ups here. No, absolutely. And that, that spread, I, I have seen it and you know, it, it does surprise me. You know, it, They're not normally far off, but I don't think they're on the money with that. You know, that injury bulletin today did come through WRU TV and I, uh, I would wonder whether they're all uh, you know, as fit as, as they're, being, you know, they're being touted. I'd say maybe bigger in Faletau. You know, that's ahead of the schedule we were led to believe they were on. They haven't played any rugby yeah. and I would probably be surprised to see them starting anyway. But yeah, they're in a really good position to have lost as many as they did and still you know pick up six points from those two games mm-hmm. I think is a pretty good return um, Gatland has absolutely no fear of playing against Joe Schmidt teams as a coach he's probably caused Joe Schmidt more more problems or his coaching ticket has caused as many problems for Ireland as, as anyone you know they did come to Dublin Ireland's record in Dublin is uh, is pretty pretty outstanding and, and the one uh, the, the one game they didn't win in the Six Nations was that draw two years ago against Wales in the first game when they were at a particularly low ebb after the World Cup so um, Cardiff has been very difficult for place for Ireland to go under under Joe and um, I think you know Dublin's a pretty difficult place for Wales to go and Ireland probably should have won that game two years ago so back on home, home soil I think Ireland will be reasonably confident but I think they'll be very wary it's Scotland's 100 test for Wales as well and there's been a big big deal made of that over in Wales you know the players will probably want to to, to perform for him as well mm. whatever that you know what that actually means on the day you don't know but I, you know there's something dangerous about this fixture um, yeah. and yeah I, I, I would be quite concerned about it yeah I, I, I kind of share that at the moment Eddie I, I, mean, I, I think we're all suddenly as the reality of it comes into focus I mean we, we got so caught up in the overall picture and let's get through Paris and then there's Italy and then suddenly Twickenham will be right on the horizon. It was possible to overlook, you know, Wales, Scotland at home, they'll be fine and and maybe we still feel pretty good but uh, Wales at home in particular it suddenly feels like a tricky enough prospect. Could be the trickiest one at the end of the day for us. Um, and the this bit of a problem for us is we actually don't know where we are exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we're two from two, which we said before the championship ball was kicked off, yeah, we'd be two from two. Um, but the problem with Paris was that we got out of jail a bit. So, you know, we, there's not a load to take out of Paris in terms of what did we get it, get done, except we won the game. Uh, and that was probably the most important thing, to be honest. But there wasn't much else to take out of Paris. And then Italy, the problem with Italy is you're going to win comfortably. See, you don't have any kind of metric to go on. So yeah. this is where the championship really kicks off. Yeah, you know the next three games define our championship. We're two from two. We said we'd be two from two, so in that sense, there's a some unknowns for Ireland. You know, um, how do we want to play Wales? Uh, how do we want to stack up against them? You know, what kind? Of, we've got our selection issues in the middle of the field. So a couple of tough decisions in the pack. Who starts at loose head? Who starts in the second row? Um, and I think the back row won't change really, given the the the, the, the injury profiles and stuff. But having said that. Yeah, this is one I was. I always had it in the back of my head that if Wales kind of delivered any sort of performance in the first two matches, they'd be dangerous. And, and I suppose they'll come into town thinking if they can play like they played against Scotland, yeah. they'll have us in all sorts of trouble. Now, that's, we'd be foolish to let them do that, but I think that's their plan. Mm. Peter O'Mahony was speaking to the media today. What was the gist of what he was saying, Rory? He didn't say a lot, Peter. Uh, you know the rules of engagement when you go into a press conference with Peter. He uh, keeps his card close to his chest and he, he sticks quite close to the message. Um, quietly confident, um, lots to work on. You know, it, it, we didn't learn an awful lot today. Um, he was probably a little bit better in the newspapers when he talked about himself and his own injury problems. But okay. if you tried to get him on uh, his own lines, disappointment, or uh, he was asked to compare Warren Gatlin and Joe Schmidt, and he said, um, I'm not here to compare coaches, they're different. But as I said, I'm not here to compare coaches. So that was the kind of uh, wall he put up, and and that's that's his prerogative to sure. do. So fair play to him. No, he, like I think if you're putting up Peter on a Monday, you're setting out the message that we're this is a serious week that we're 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 all business, and that's okay. the message he conveys. So is, um, is is Peter? I mean, if if uh, Sean O'Brien might be admittedly he's injured, but if if from a Irish press officer point of view, Sean O'Brien might be liable to sell a few more tickets, <laughs> kind of a week uh, press conference. Peter Manny weak press for a kind of a weak press conference is let's not say anything which can cause any kind of uh, tension or ramp up the build up. He's, he's very concise in his yeah. message, and like he's not a bad talker, and he, he certainly 
you know, when he speaks, you know, he's obviously a leader in the camp. So behind the scenes, when he speaks, he listens. But he does, he wasn't Safe giving much hands. away. Yeah. I think the big thing is tomorrow whether um, Furlong trains. I think that's the big concern. You know, the briefings have all been quite positive about him, but Joe did say that he was more concerned about him than Ian Henderson or or James Ryan last week. I think there is more concern there than. And um, we probably realise about Tyke Furlong. At two weeks, it's a very tight turnaround for a hamstring injury. Yeah. And, you know, having already lost Robbie Henshaw and having a very, I think it's the most inexperienced centre partnership with Ireland that will ever have fielded in a Six Nations match. Yeah. If if Ireland were to lo- then lose Tyke Furlong and either start with John Ryan or Andrew Porter, it very much changes um, the way the, the, the whole thing is set up. And, yeah. and I think that spread, that is one one kind of in, bit of injury news. And tomorrow's the day. It's always Tuesday. If you, if you train on Tuesday, you're picked. They might wait a bit longer for Tyke Furlong, but I think they'll need to get a scrum under his belt at least just to test that hamstring well, uh, out. I was going to say, Eddie, and your experience is, because uh, I saw Eddie O'Sullivan made the point in Athlone last week that Furlong was running at 70% and was changing direction. Is actually the scrum the bigger issue or will it still be sprinting? Uh, still sprinting for a hamstring. Okay. Um, but having said that, you know, uh, injuries tend to heal exponentially, like in the sense that there's a lot of improvement in the early days and then you get it's like the last ten percent mm. takes longer to get you know get everything sorted. So seventy percent is great, but it's the next thirty of the problem with a, with a hamstring injury. And like you need to be able to sprint flat out in a hamstring. You can't carry a hamstring through again, not an international level, not at this level. Um, the thing that worried me about for long when he went off is that he he wasn't he 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 pulled up with the injury, and it was severe enough that he he limped off. And my experience, like, if you have a grade one hamstring, sort of twin, just, you know, probably 10 days with the with the quality of physio we have now, maybe seven to 10 days for a grade one. Um, you don't limp with a grade one, in my experience. Like, it's probably a little worse than a grade one. It could be boring on a grade two. And that's a hell of a challenge to get done in two weeks, you know. Um, he'd be right on the bubble, I think. Okay. And I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't make it. Now, we're all keeping our fingers crossed on that one, but... I wouldn't be shocked if, if he doesn't quite make it. I remember that when Driscoll missed Crow Park, the first game of Crow Park in 07 against France, mm-hmm. he was on the bubble. But uh, the day before, the Friday before, Gary O'Driscoll, the doctor said, Nick, he's just, he's, 90, he's 95%, 98%, but that's not good enough for a test game. And that's the risk. And, and then if you go in on it and you're compromising, and it does go, you could be talking about a serious setback. So, it's 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 kind of it's 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 playing with dynamite in those situations. But look, they are, they seem to be confident. But I, I hope their I hope their confidence comes through. You know. Yeah, uh, John Cooney's coming to the squad. Luke McGrath, unfortunately, injured over the weekend for Leinster. And then uh, Eddie mentioned the uh, centre situation. So Gary Ringrose has joined up with the squad, and obviously Chris Farrell is in pole position. It seems and. I mean, do do you do we get the feeling, Rory, that they're looking very seriously at Ringrose here? No, Gary Ringrose is in the squad, but he trained with Leinster today and didn't train with Ireland, as far okay, as I'm so aware. That's, that's um, not very serious. He, at all. I think he came in tonight and may train with them tomorrow to get a sense of what they're doing. But I, I would be very surprised. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to play for Leinster against the Southern Kings on Friday, okay. um, which uh, which will feed nicely into the Scarlets game next week, which will be a you know natural step up. Mm. And then I think they'll be looking at, at Gary Ringrose playing against Scotland, Scotland. In, in two weeks' time, okay. unless Chris Farrell has a stormer and you know makes makes a very convincing case for himself. But yeah, yeah I think I mean th- there has to be it has to be said that Gary Ringrose hasn't had a great season. Um, his form wasn't com- that compelling before he got a second injury. So he's come back from that shoulder injury. He's he's re- he's now had a, a bit of ankle surgery. It's in the most, I think. Yeah. So you know in between that he he was pretty guilty of a few defensive errors i think he was finding his his feet um he's had quite a bit of a disrupted season so i think they need him to show some form as well i think people are kind of maybe going on gary ringo's form of last year mm. whereas um you know like he, we all see the quality that he has but i i wonder whether joel needs him to, to see something against the scarlet um the week after this to uh, to force prove that, yeah to force his way in because i think he's he's probably a better he's a better player than than farrell at full full tilt but we haven't seen him at full tilt eddie with your uh, head coach hat on what are you expecting from wales based on what you've seen in the opening two rounds and i appreciate their uh, starting 15 could change reasonably mm. dramatically and and that is a big consideration and how are ireland most likely to um, try and counteract that and then just to throw more uh, complication on everything, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what the weather is going to be like either. So, sure. I mean, being a head coach ain't easy. No, I, I think what 
Wales will try and do is they'll try and replicate uh, what they did to Scotland. They'll try and keep the ball in hand, get on the front foot, get some width on the game, um, keep the tempo high. The Wales have always been comfortable with a high tempo game mm. because their skill set's very good. Now, I mean, like I suppose you look at the way Scotland played against them, and defended against them. You know, it, it was it was just complete negligence on their part the way they played. Uh, but I don't think Ireland are going to do that. There's no way. We're going to be sucked into that game. So, but the trick is, can we take that game away from Wales? And that will mean a lot of playing possession and territory. And if we go wide against Wales, we need to be sure it's a good time to go there because if we turn over ball out wide, you know they're they're quite happy to run back at you. They won't be uncomfortable in Dublin. The, the all the Wales players they're happy to come to Dublin and play. They won't be intimidated. They'd prefer to have us in Cardiff, no doubt. But so I think they'll just try and replicate the game in in. Uh, they had against uh, Scotland. I don't think they expect to get the same latitude, yeah. but they don't have to. Like if they nick a couple of tries and they defend like the defender and twicking them, that could be the game right there. And we've got to control the pace of the game. We've got to control the field position. So I don't see us throwing the ball around very much. I think it's been very direct and putting the ball in behind them at every chance and and making sure we get our our, our kick chase in place and play with a ping pong if we have to. And the other thing is the contestables we kick have to be really on the money because if Williams uh, and Happeny come into the back three, like they're not going to be afraid of those those up and unders. They'll gobble them up, you know. Mm. I mean, George North might be a little more sus- suspect under him. And he, you may you may find him if he starts, you know, getting a more of an area of bombardment. But all in all, we have to be very precise on the weekend, and it'll be about controlling the pace again. If we play the okay. the game that's played at the pace we want. I think we'll win. If it gets played at the pace Wales want they could probably win the game on that alone. So this, uh, for, for me then, when we talk next Monday, it's say Ireland win the game. This is an important conversation to remember where you're talking about things like territory and controlling the game mm. and precision. Yeah. Uh, when I'm asking you, could we not be a bit more creative? Well, d- d- you, does, being creative doesn't mean you can't be precise. That's sure, but I, I'm anticipating a lot of kicking based on what you're saying and, and not throwing the ball around much. Um. At the right time, you know, you might. It doesn't mean you can't run a, a really good start or play to get over the game line. It doesn't mean you you can't go to the outside channels in your phase play, provided you can resource the rocks out there and and there's a good dividend out of it. Mm. Like if you're sloppy um, and you're kicking, it, I mean, kicking the ball is just as dangerous against Wales if it's not accurate. Mm. They will punish you on a counter attack as well. Um, the thing that's kind of been biting at me for a couple of weeks is that I think our defence has not been particularly good this championship. And I think three tries against Italy and one against France. Like, my worry is that Italy and France aren't the best attacking teams in the championship. And that's why I think Wales will come and test us. They'll test our defence. They'll really go after us. Um, And I I think no one will care on Saturday night if if we uh, kind of squeeze the life out of Wales. Like, England tried to do that to them and and got it done. Mm. That was England's plan. They weren't going to play loose and loose with with, with Wales because they knew the risks in it. Um, and I think we've got to think along the same lines. But it doesn't mean we can't be creative. We can't pass the ball. We just have to be very smart about how we do it and when we do it. And I think you know we'd probably not. I, I expect we won't play much a lot in our own half, and that's not a problem. Yeah. Like you have to cut your cloth. You play different teams different ways. Like I think we. We started out against France by throwing it around, but then we, for whatever reason, maybe it was the weather or whatever, I think we went into it. But against Italy, we were never going to do that. We, we ran Italy off, the, off their feet, which you've always done with them. But I think, again, you have to re- recalibrate against a team like Wales now. And controlling territory and the pace of the game is probably the most important thing. And I would say one thing about Wales, their defence has been excellent. You know, they, mm. they really, like, and they're disciplined against England. They had two penalties against England, which is ridiculous, but we're a good defensive side as well without giving away penalties but I think it'll be a real arm wrestle that's my concern it'll be a real arm wrestle and and when you get into an arm wrestle it could go either way in a Six Nations game there's there's no the outcome is very much dependent on maybe a refereeing call or something and that's that's the problem yeah Rory I want to bring you in on all of that but just one quick follow up um, Eddie with the clock ticking is there any um, is there a trend to your concerns over Irish defence? Um, like I mean, for a long time we were all talking about a certain narrowness post twenty fifteen mm. Argentina, and, and we saw that in Murrayfield last year. Is there is yeah. there anything kind of which is standing out, or is it just on the face of it you don't like the sound of conceding those three tries? No, there's a, there's a couple of things. There were three things. One was 
I thought Italy's first trial, like, we just overloaded the short side, which is a fairly basic error. You know, you give out to a club side for doing it, having six defenders on one side of the rock and being really skinny on the other. And, and that's what happened to uh, Dan Levy. He got, got, he got a mismatch and he yeah. didn't help himself like an old line. So, but they were very, that's very fixable. The other thing that struck me was that Italy's um, try um, uh, inside our, our red zone, their, Italy's green zone, where they just threw two long passes and and uh, the winger scored in the corner. It was we defended them all and we collapsed around them all. We had ten defenders in around them all, and you know Rob Kearney came up and in, but the pass still got to get out to the winger and Larmer couldn't stop him. Italy scored an identical try against Ireland at the same end of the pitch two years ago. You know, and, and by just again being, get, we got too narrow close to the line, right. and uh, that 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 that's still there. You know, if, if teams pound us off in the corner, we tend to collapse in there and leave the the far side of the field open. And then there was, you know, I suppose the kick chase problem where Teddy Thomas scored. That was a quick lineup, but it's still a transition play. Mm. And then obviously the one against Italy was a replica, except it wasn't Teddy Thomas. It was it was um, it took a few passes from the Italians, you know. Um, so like that, there are things that are systemic problems, mm. and my worry is, and I think oh, they're all fixables, and you can imagine they're working their socks off on it. That teams like Italy and France causing trouble would worry me that there are bigger trouble coming down the pike if 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 we make those mistakes again, because the next three teams down down the pike will hurt you more. Mm. There's lots in all of that, Rory. Where do you want to jump in, or what stands out to you? Well, I think what's one of one interest, interesting factor is the Lions effect, and the fact that Ireland's defence coach was the Lions defence coach working under Warren Gatland alongside Rob Howley last summer, and was a massive influence in the way the Lions defended and played last summer. Um, Warren Gatland would have observed Andy Farrell on a daily basis. Uh, he was really influential, and he would have also observed how the All Blacks um, narrowed up and went around the corner, basically to negate the Lions' line speed. The line speed was the the key factor in the Lions drawing the series and was one of the, uh, the Lions' main strengths. So, I think he would have learned. Like obviously, Farrell learned from working with Gatland as well, and and they're all learning from each other and and picking out little bits, but. Um, I think that's definitely got to be a factor. You know, he he'll have seen every defense coach. You know, cheats a little. You know, you, you take a little bit. You, know, you go hard on your line speed, so you leave gaps elsewhere. So Gallum will know, have an idea where those gap those gaps are. So that is probably you know, it's definitely a factor, if not a if not a concern. Um, I think there is certainly. I think Jacob Stockdale has a little bit to prove in terms of his defense. Um. I think you know. I think there's, we saw that in, in over Christmas in the the Leinster game in particular, mm. and I think I'm sure that that game tape has been reviewed by Wales and LC opportunities. They're very strong in the back three, and they have negated. Like I mean, Eddie Eddie talked about the um, the kicking game and and the c- kicking for contestables and things like that. But Wales have dealt very well with Ireland in the air in in the last couple of games. Bigger, I know he may not play, but he's been really good. It, you know they. They they do that thing of hiding their out half in the backfield, but in his case, he's actually very strong there. Patchell and um, Gareth Anscombe are both fullbacks as well as out half, so they're very strong aerially. So they they are strong in a lot of areas where Ireland try and exploit weakness. Um, and Ireland have tried taking them on the ground in Cardiff under the roof in the last couple of times, and it hasn't really worked out for them. They've managed to like get line breaks but haven't been able to finish off and Joe Schmidt has spoken about the Welsh scramble defence and their brilliant capacity to get back mm-hmm. and maybe get away with murder a little bit on the deck he's kind of bemoaned loosely a few of the kind of refereeing decisions that have gone against his team like last year in Cardiff was crazy if you, if you think back to the you know Johnny Sexton went off for HIA then he went Simbin Conor Murray stayed on with one wing for 10 minutes when he probably should have come off yeah, and, then, and then Robbie Henshaw got caught offside as they were going over the line so it was a it was a fairly chaotic match yeah but still, you know, Ireland couldn't get over the line, didn't score a try. So look, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors at play. I think Eddie outlined them really well there, and, and so there's are, a lot of reasons we, to be worried. <laughs> are, we, are we going for an Ireland win ultimately, lads? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still on the fence a little yeah, bit. I'm not, it's silly to say it depends, but it depends on who controls the tempo of the game. And if Ireland control the tempo of the game, I think we'll beat them. We will beat them. It'll be a tight game. But if Wales get get to play the way they want to play. And it's, it's the old story, you know, you find out what a team likes doing, you take it away from them. Mm-hmm. We know what Wales like doing, but if we can take that away from them, we'll win the game. And it might be comfortable in the end if we can do it for 80 minutes. It's very hard to do. You, usually teams hit a purple patch at some point. But that's, it's all about imposing yourself on the game. I don't know if Ireland will. If they will, we'll win. And that's why it's a hard one to call. Very hard one to call. And that's the reason. If Wales get to play, they want to play. I wouldn't be confident we'll beat them. 
that's, that's simple as that for me. Coming into the Championship, Joe, there was a lot of talk about other teams were missing a lot of players and suddenly it's Ireland who are in that position, I think. Yeah. you know, like Robbie Henshaw is a big loss to the midfield. As I said, it's very experienced. Furlong, I think it all rests maybe like not to put too much pressure on him as he as he goes into his uh, you know his, his his last day of rehab before he trains or whatever. But I think a lot rests on his shoulders and his capacity to make it because um, like John Ryan hasn't been starting for Munster this season and Porter's really inexperienced and it's a good Welsh tight five. Um, you know, there's question marks over two second rows if if Ryan or Henderson don't make it, you're you're going down into the depths of the depth chart again. And we're all you know, Ireland are already missing Sean O'Brien, Jamie Heaslip, very experienced players in the back row. And suddenly that youth that, you know, has been a you know, people are want to see youth over, you know, young players picked becomes a little bit of a concern. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's a very a very experienced, very uh good Welsh team that are coming over this week and uh, you know, the closer it gets the the more concern I'm getting. Okay. Well, this was a very sobering <laughs> chat, I think, for all of us in various ways. Uh, a last uh, quick point then. So uh, Scotland, I think, are averaging just over 30 points at Murrayfield over the last uh, two years or so. England are also two for two in this competition, along with Ireland, and go there uh, joint top of the Six Nations table. Will they go to Murrayfield and win, lads? Eddie, what do you think? I think so. I think they'll do what they did to Wales. They'll choke out Scotland. They won't let them play. Um, I think they'll be just... It's a power game. I think Eddie Jones doesn't care how they win as long as they win and just keep the pot boiling. So I expect that they'll be very direct, very physical. I don't know if, if Scotland can handle that. Um, I think Scotland will try and play the way they want to play, but I think their big problem is at 10. You know, I, I just think that um, they're struggling in that position. And, and, and um, for that reason, I think they, their control of the game is all over the place. Um, you know, uh, Finn Russell is, is just... Um, he's just he not did, controlling. He, he, he does just, very, he does very good things at times, and then other times he boosts well, the ball away, it, and you wonder well, what that, he's thinking. That's exactly, that's exactly right, Joe. That's exactly the problem. Like he's a boomer bus player. Like he does something fantastic, and then he does something appalling. I mean, I thought he was very poor against against France. Like the number of mistakes he made, but that's your quarterback. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't. It's alright for a winger to do that, <laughs> you know, in a sense, like because but you get that many touches on the ball in a game as a ten. And it's it's an adventure every time you get it as to what might happen. Yes, yeah. not a good strategy. Yeah, and I I just think he doesn't have the control of the game. Um, and I, I just think, yeah, you're right. He does something great, and then he does something crazy. Uh, but some for me, I think it's very hard for Scotland to, to 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 consistently perform when you've got their key guy who's all over the place. Um, and I I have, I mean, I've been saying to myself, am oh, I missing something here with this guy? Maybe he's this genius. I don't get it, but. I'm still he's still an enigma as far as I'm concerned still not getting it yeah what about you Rory yeah he's one of those players who's really good in Scottstown when Glasgow are dominating up front or you know again in Murrayfield if, if the pack are getting on top he's been you know that Scotland are down a lot of front rows there's a couple back this week but you don't yeah. want to be going in against England um, down not, a couple not, of front rows not much of a plan B uh, side is often thrown at them as well and, yeah. and not least when the weather's not good yeah absolutely and, and England are not a team where you, you, you want to be bad on the back foot you know they're going to put pressure on so, yeah, you know, I'm sure Eddie will be ramping up the Eddie Jones will be ramping up the pressure on um, on Russell this week, and and the talk is that his head has been turned a bit because he's going to Racing on Mega Money next year, and you know he's already starting to think about that. So, um, you Jeez, know, you're really not getting something, Eddie. Eddie, you're gone. Sorry, you're really not yeah. get, getting something. Finn Finn Russell going to France on Mega Money. What about yeah? I, I just no. I, I, the line broke there. Sorry, Joe. Can you repeat that? Yeah, we were just we were just joking there. Uh, Rory mentioned that uh, Russell is going to France on mega money. Yeah. I was saying, geez, you're really not getting something then. Yeah, I, I, I well, I think that I don't know. They're getting something. They wouldn't have white half to sign to be honest with you. Yeah, but with Russell, he's going to have a, a big pack. He'll be behind. You know, they'll be going forward. He'll have Simon nice Zebo, Teddy Tom outside him. Yeah, nice pitch under a roof. Life will be good, you know. I think that's a bit It'll different be exciting, to having. The, anyway. Yeah, it certainly exciting. will. Whatever else, you know. And so sorry, Rory. Well, anyway, you um, you think England ultimately? Yeah, will. I haven't bought. The, I haven't bought the Scottish thing. They're always good in November. Gregor Townsend's a good coach, and obviously Varane Cotter improved them. But I just keep going back to the fact that Warren Gatland didn't pick any of them really for the Lions, and he didn't do. You know, he wasn't cutting off his nose to spite, his face, to spite his face. He was doing that for a reason, and Twickenham last year was just so horrendous. But isn't Murrayfield a very different thing with Scotland of all teams? It is, but you still expect England, Ireland, and Wales to go up and win there. Okay. 
So uh, this is one of those weekends. This feels like a fairly decisive midpoint in the championship then based on what you're saying about the games in Dublin and, um, well, maybe Scotland pull off a shock. So uh, we'll see. And then obviously France have Italy on, on Friday night and uh, I don't even know what French team has been named at this stage. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very different one anyway given the amount of one, uh, players that are suspended. And uh, like that's a real... If Italy are ever going to win a win a game and you know Marseille on a Friday night in France against the team that the the players who are left must be pretty peeved off with either the coach or their teammates. I can't imagine team spirit is that that good. And are, do we know are the suspended dozen or however many are gone? Are they gone for the championship or do we know if they're coming back or is that up in the air? I don't know for sure, but I know they're gone for this game anyway. Yeah, okay. Depends on what happens next Friday night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the the morality might change pretty quickly if things don't go well. <laughs> Okay, lads, enjoy the weekend. We'll talk next week. Thanks a million. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Eddie. Monday Night Rugby on Off The Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Moncrief. Apparently, we're going on Facebook Live, not on our usual method today. And the difference with Facebook Live is that they leave it on even during the ad breaks. And yeah, usually myself and Esther and Jean take all our clothes and run naked around the studio during the ad breaks on the news, but we won't be doing that today. You try to get people to turn on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moncrief. With Gas Networks Ireland. Back tomorrow on News Talk. This is the old Red Cow